Welcome to Garden Crossings. I'm Heidi. Today I'm going to be taking you for the garden tour through my backyard. And I love doing this July garden tour because this is one of the garden tours that always gets the most views and the plants are just always perfect this time of year. So let's go ahead, take a walk through my garden and show you all of the beautiful things that are currently blooming. We're currently on the side of my house and I wanted to start here just for a different um, perspective in this video. So the, like I said, the hydrangeas are blooming right now and are absolutely gorgeous. Here we have the mini mauvette. Love the bright, bright pink. It only gets about three foot tall and three foot wide. So really a very nice compact bloomer and just such a vivid, vivid pink. Here's a bobo hydrangea. This is a panicle hydrangea. You can see there's a lot of buds going on. No flowers yet, but typically the panicles do bloom much later than what the arborescence or smooth hydrangeas do. Here we have the incredible blush, which has really large pink blooms. The incredible series is known for its sturdy stems and really big blooms. Blush is pink, and I'll be showing you the incredible, the white incredible later on in this garden tour. We're gonna make our way through here around and under the tree and show you so many more things. All right, so we're gonna check back with this garden in a second, but we're gonna turn around and show you what I just walked through. So you can see we've got white sun patience. White sun patience is gonna be a theme throughout the gardens. The reason is, is I like to use white in the garden because it really pops at night. So you'll be seeing a lot more of those white sun patients throughout the tour. Got some beautiful purple, or they're purple, but the um, Argeratum Artist Blue. I just love those plants. I think they're so pretty, that beautiful blue coloration. This huge hasta is hasta sage. This is one of the first plants that have been in our, this, this is one of the first plants that we ever planted in this garden. And it is just a huge, huge plant and kind of a staple because it's one of the first. We've got some beautiful white clips, Campanula here on the bottom. This is a great border plant. Really compact, only about eight inches tall. Daylilies are starting to bloom. This is one of the, I believe this is the rosy or red hot returns, which is a reblooming daylily. Did you know daylilies last for one day before they fall? And then there's plenty more that come days following beautiful still be tucked in so this area here this is a uh, east facing garden so it gets sun until about maybe one or so o'clock and then it's shade the rest of the afternoon so we are located in West Michigan we're a zone 5b 6a really kind of depends on the year um, so all of the plants here in this garden if you're seeing them in my garden tour you can be assured that they're hardy down to at least a zone 5 I'm gonna to try to list the names of the plants. I'm gonna say the names of the plants. And if you need more information, you can head to our website, gardencrossings.com, where you can get all the information on the plant. It's hardiness zones, if it's deer resistant, um, all the things. And we also will ship them directly to your door if there's something you're interested in. So this plant here is my favorite. This is Alstroemeria. This is Inca Ice. And this plant just blooms forever. So it starts blooming sometime in June here in Michigan and will blo be blooming until the first really hard frost. It's a great cut flower. You can take stems and cut it and it just keeps producing more and more. So really a gorgeous plant. This is one plant, believe it or not. It's a pretty old plant and it kind of has spread throughout the garden, but I'm fine with that because it just is such rewarding with the long bloom time that it has. Planted in front of the window is the little quick fire hydrangea. You can see the beautiful white flowers. They're gonna to turn to beautiful rosy pink as the summer continues to go on. Next, we'll turn around and head to the circle garden here. The circle garden is really a mass planting of about four or five different plants. Uh, so right up front here, this variegated foliage you're seeing, this is the Wajila Maimone. In the spring, it gets beautiful pink tubular flowers, which are great for the hummingbirds. We have a lot of red sun patients in here just to kind of add that constant splash of color because you know when you're planting shrubs, they kind of go through cycles. So you want to have something that's always blooming. So the Atlas roses are cycling right now, so we're not seeing the beautiful blooms, but Atlas roses have beautiful peachy blooms and 
that you can see there's some spent blooms, but there's a lot of new buds coming. So these have gorgeous fragrant pink blooms that you can see in our previous garden tour from about three weeks ago. We also have the Bloomerang Dwarf Lilacs, which are spring bloomers. They also rebloom, so they are cycling right now again, and actually we'll go in and take a look. I had the gardeners trim them back just to kind of get them shaped, but those little sprigs that you're seeing sticking up, those are blooms that will be, bloom that will be blooming this summer. So that's what's nice about the Bloomerang Lilacs is they are a reblooming lilac. Now, I will say, the first spring bloom is always the most prolific and just most gorgeous bloom. But if you can get any type of bloom throughout the summer as a rebloom, I always call that a win. Another My Monet. I just, I really love the foliage on this plant. That beautiful rosy outlined with a variegated white and green. Here's another bloomering lilac. So basically we've got three bloomering lilacs, three atlas roses, and five of the My Monet Wajillas. And then of course a ton of red sun patients in this bed. The anchor plant there in the center, that is a standard limelight hydrangea. So that will be blooming later on in the summer, but that's really kind of what I'm gonna call like our focal point or the, just the anchor of the garden here. We're gonna head now under the deck and show you some more shade varieties. So when we do our hanging baskets in this area, they don't get watered very often. So even though you're seeing drippers kind of in the baskets, they actually don't get drip. So we have to be very intentional about coming out here and watering them. So that's why we like to use ferns because ferns are pretty forgiving. If you water them, maybe not as often as you should, they're gonna, they're gonna usually be okay. So this combination has red sun patience with the Kimberly Fern, and then I always love to use the Diconda Silver Falls because I just love how it trails down the hanging baskets. You'll also notice in this bed, there's some Rebecca, and no, this is not a shade plant, but you can see that it's doing pretty good in this pretty shady area. There's a lot of hostas in here. The one I always get asked about is this one right in front of me, Hosta Liberty. Also in this garden space, we have a lot of bleeding heart for spring color. Um, you can see some of the plants in there. Um, that's a bleeding heart there. So really this time of year, it's just foliage. And a lot of times too, bleeding hearts will just kind of die back in the summer because sometimes it just gets too hot. Um, but that's a great plant that adds beautiful spring color into this bed. We also have some astilbe tucked in. Obviously you can see this astilbe here is past its prime and it also looks like there's a bird nest up ahead sure enough above that post and they're making a little bit of a mess here i don't know i don't mind birds i have bird feeders and bird houses in the garden so i just let them nest it, they're not hurting anything so it's not a problem here we've got some beautiful limetta hydrangeas and Limetta is also a compact, smooth hydrangea or arborescence hydrangea. These here are probably about three and a half foot tall, maybe even four foot tall. So a little bit taller than what, than what they should get. Of course, height is always variable, right? Sometimes things do get taller than what they should get. Um, but they're just, they're a nice plant to plant in front of the window. Really pretty, big flowers, crisp white flower heads. Uh, and a great addition to this garden. The reason I like the Limetta is because if I trim them in the fall or trim them in the spring, it really doesn't matter. They're going to bloom reliable for me year after year. In this little space here, we have again, more of the white sun patients. Like I said, you're gonna be seeing a lot of sun patients throughout the garden. We also have some bleeding heart and these are full sun bleeding heart and they're doing just fabulous. Behind them, we have some cat's meow Cat's meow has already bloomed once and you can kind of see the kind of the icky brown spent blooms, but we go back to the center of the plant and it's pushed those dead brown flowers away and it's reblooming with a fresh cycle. So with cat's pajamas, that's a nice plant too that's long blooming. You just trim it back when it's done flowering if you get around to it. And then you'll have two, three, maybe even four cycles of flowers throughout the summer. 
The daylilies are really starting to bloom right now. Rosie returns right here, which is another reblooming daylily. A little bit smaller flower form, but really a beautiful pink flower. They're just they're so they're so romantic looking. In the back there, you'll see some purple emperor cone flowers. The pink mink clematis is blooming. Let's go in and take a closer look here at pink mink. See if the sun is going to be our friend or not. But pink mink is a little bit smaller flower form, but there are a ton of flowers on this plant. Pink mink is one of the proven winners, clematis, and it's just it does really well for me every year. It's a very reliable plant. Here's a cluster of a whole, bif whole bunch of different cone flowers. So when planting cone flowers, I do like to mix them um, because I just, I like this look of all the different colors. No, this is not one plant giving me all this colors. This is many plants planted within close proximity and they're just all mingling and playing really nice together. Here's a garden surprise, which is always fun when you get these little surprises in the garden. I'm gonna step off a little ledge here and hopefully not fall. So here's the garden surprise. This is a Be My Calla Lily, one of the proven winter calla lilies. These are not hardy in Michigan, zone 5B6A, but look at here. This came back. So this is definitely one of those plants that it's fun to have these fun garden surprises. And the flower is so big. It's about four inches or five inches tall and about two, three inches wide. I love the beautiful plant, um, the beautiful yellow. I believe the variety is called Be My Sunshine. We're both trying to get our work done tonight. So I'm trying to record between him mowing the lawn and now blowing grass off that pad there. So we're gonna take a little break while he's doing the blowing because it interferes with me talking. All right, the blower is done blowing. So what we do is when we get done mowing, we'll blow any grass clippings off any areas that they shouldn't be. So that's what he was finishing up. So let's continue on with the garden tour though because that's what you're all here to see. The beautiful yellow is the Heliopsis Tuscan Sun. That's another long blooming perennial, loves it hot, loves it dry. So if you're more of a southern gardener, we're in the north and it does great, but in the south, this is one of those plants that's gonna love the heat. Here we've got some beautiful, I think this is the Glamour Girl Phlox actually, a tall phlox, really pretty pink flowers going on. Yes, those are Gerber daisies you're seeing. These were a proven winter Gerber daisy several, several years ago. They discontinued it and they come back every year here in my garden. There was, I think, four varieties at the time. The pink is the only one that continues to come back. But again, that was another garden surprise. Up against the fence, we have more of the mini Mauvet hydrangeas, and they're doing really nicely. This is just, I think, their prime for their color. They're right at the peak, right at the point that I'm glad I'm able to show them to you today. So they get about three foot tall and three foot wide, and they're doing fabulous. Planted behind is the Jack Manny Clematis. This one's been here for a long time. Just a fairly traditional deep dark purple, fairly aggressive Clematis. And this has been blooming now for probably about a month now. Got a few more of the daylilies here up front. Again, these are part of the Returns series. And I love them because they're reblooming, so they can they last a little bit longer than what just other traditional daylilies last. This clematis is doing really well. Um, again, this has been blooming for quite some time. It is kind of past its prime at this point though, so ignore you know the bug chews or whatever that's going on. But this is the Blue Angel clematis, and this one is very prolific, gorgeous plant. You are seeing a little bit of pink in there. That's the pink mink clematis. Whenever I plant clematis, especially on a structure like this, it has four sides. So that gives me opportunity for four different clematis. Why I like to mix them together is because if one's not blooming, maybe the other one will. So that way you're constantly getting color up and down your, your different structures that you have in the garden. Now, I always kind of forget to take this turn when I'm doing the garden tours, and somebody's recently asked me, Heidi, I haven't seen your Tough Stuff Hydrangeas. And that is 
what we're going to show you here today. So this is two Tough Stuff hydrangeas. They've been planted for several years, maybe, maybe eight to 10 years as well. And I did not touch these last fall. I was going to do a trimming on them and show you a video of how to trim the mountain hydrangeas, but I didn't want to do it because I wanted to go ahead and just see what they would do this, um, this summer. And as you can tell, they are gorgeous. So beautifully filled with flowers. Uh, for us here, they're more of a pink tone. For you, they may be more blue. And actually, we're gonna kind of look underneath it here. There's a few that are showing just a little bit more of that purpley blue. So these blooms you're seeing now, these are all from last year's growth. And this side over here, it looks a little bit more green. But the reason is, is because it's all new growth. So underneath all of this green, look at, that's all the flowers from last year. It's covering them up. So these new growth here, this is gonna also give us flowers. So not only we're gonna get one really beautiful cycle that you're seeing, we're gonna get additional cycles of flowers a little bit later on. Um, here's an example. There's a little bud tucked in there. So really, there's so many great hydrangeas in that Tough Stuff family right now. You can't go wrong with any of the ones that you may choose. All right, let's head on out to the butterfly garden and see what's blooming out there. The butterfly garden is looking really nice right now. So you'll see we have it lined in white sun patience. And the reason I do that is because when I'm up at the house looking down, it really frames in this garden bed and white glows at night. So really from the house looking down, the white really pops once the sun has gone down. Why we use so many sun patients, especially here at the house, is because we really don't do a great job ourselves of getting out in the landscape and fertilizing all of our annuals. And sun patients are one of those annuals that don't need a lot of fertilizer. So they thrive beautifully without needing to be fed. So right up front here, we have a whole bunch of cone flower. When I first planted this bed, I think I probably had seven or eight different varieties. Some have fizzled and faded over the years, but you can see right now there's still quite a lot of color and variety going on there. There's pinks and purples and reds and oranges and yellows, light pinks, just so many different colors. I love seeing that beautiful blend of the echinacea or coneflower when it's blooming. As I mentioned, this is a butterfly garden, so it's super important that you have host plants. And the, the, the butterfly I'm mostly trying to attract into this garden is monarchs. So we have a lot of milkweed or Asclepius in this garden. This one here looks like it's starting to just get ready to bloom. I haven't seen any monarchs quite yet in this space, so I'm not anticipating seeing any caterpillars because obviously you need the eggs and such to have the caterpillars, but something I'm gonna watch um, as I start seeing some monarchs in this garden area. Okay, Bobo hydrangea. So many people have asked me about trimming hydrangeas. How do you trim them? When do you trim them? What do you do, Heidi, when you're trimming them? So I did a series of trimming videos that you can reference last fall that shows me trimming Bobo hydrangea, Incredible hydrangea, uh, Invincible Spirit hydrangea, um, Mini Mauvette, Wee White, all the different type of hydrangeas. And we didn't just give them a little trim, we gave them a hacking. So this plant was taken down to about two foot tall and we took out all the dead twigs and everything. So really what we were left with was just some pretty substantial stems at the bottom. A lot of people were scared by what I was doing, but look at the results. This plant is beautifully shaped. It's over three foot tall now and it's gonna be blooming this fall. So I am glad it was the first year we really did any major trimming on the plant and the results are right here in front of you. It looks great. This is the Miss Molly butterfly bush. I love butterfly bush. Typically here in Michigan, butterfly bush will die back to the ground. This year we did not trim this bush at all because I wanted to see if it would come back off of the, the old stems. So butterfly bush are more like a perennial here in Michigan, not a shrub, but we had a fairly mild winter, even though we got some really good dumpings of snow. This year, this plant did come back off of the old growth and it's looking really nice. I love the color of Miss Molly and it's so fragrant here too as I'm walking past it. 
We have a few tropical rose sun patients also tucked in the garden. I love the foliage of that, that bicolor foliage with the pink. I think that's really pretty. Some Minarda in here that is just kind of finishing up. But even when Minarda is done, look at those pods. They look really pretty too. I mean, they, they still have kind of a purple hue to them. It's a Spagila little redhead. It's kind of past its prime. But if we give it a little trim, I think we might be able to get some more flowers out of it. But look at those beautiful red and white blooms. This is a really great plant, and I'm excited because next year Proven Winners is going to be adding some Spagilla to their perennial collection. So we've got two new varieties that we'll be able to introduce to you next year. And let me tell you, they are gorgeous. All right, let's walk into the garden path. So you can see on this side, we also have a planting of coneflower. For whatever reason, this area here is mostly just reds and purples but there really isn't much room to sneak some yellows and oranges in, so we'll just leave it as is. But I don't know, there's something about cornflowers that are just so gorgeous. I see another clematis blooming. We've got Viva Polonia. This is one of the proven winter clematises. Beautiful magenta blooms with that white kind of star in the center. And this one's been blooming for a good month now. And you can see all of the seed pods or seed heads remaining, but it's just continuing to send out more and more blooms. As we look across the garden, this is getting very full. This garden is really starting to look like a mature garden, which is good. Uh, so we have some lupin here. The lupin are done. Um, you can see the little seed pods on there. I think I might leave those for a while because as they turn dark, like you're seeing there, they'll crack open and drop some seeds. I love lupin for early spring color, or maybe I should say a more early summer color. They're just, they're such a fun, whimsy plant. I don't know, there's something about them that is just, I love lupin. <laughs> the white you're seeing here, White Wands Veronica. Really pretty. Some salvia, some annual salvia there, rock and play in the blues. And then check out that red lark delphinium. Oh, those are the most beautiful colored delphinium. I mean, I love the blues, don't get me wrong, but I love this because I really haven't seen this color delphinium before. One thing I can say is I'm not sure if this is one or two plants. I do think it's two plants. So they've recently been planted. So we'll come in and we'll probably put a tomato cage around them. That way next year as they grow, the tomato cage will be there to help support them so that they don't uh, tip over. Um, I'll have to double check the height on these. Right now they're about 30 inches tall, so they're not too tall that they're going to tip. But if they're going to get much taller, I definitely want to cage them because I don't want the wind to crack them and split them. But that really kind of pops out in this garden. We also have some more phlox here. This is the opening act phlox. Looking really nice. More milkweed. This is Escalapius Cinderella. This one is almost as tall as I am. It's probably about five foot tall. Uh, Cinderella is a swamp milkweed. So there's some milkweed that does better in wetter areas and some that do better in drier areas. And for me in this garden, this Cinderella is really prolific and it does seed itself, which I'm okay with to a certain point um, because obviously I want the milkweed in the garden. Uh, but there's sometimes our seedlings that we do pull because it's just it's it's very um, generous with the seedlings that it gives so far i'm not seeing any holes in the foliage holes generally mean that there's little baby caterpillars so again like i said i haven't seen monarchs out here yet so we'll continue to watch this plant to see if any caterpillars um, end up on it i am seeing a lot of bumblebees though so it is great for even the pollinators before those monarchs arrive The pet of cat's pajamas there needs to get trimmed back, so it will reflush out nice. Um, but that's just a great, great little plant that really rewards you with a lot of color throughout the summer. The lupin, the gardeners are coming this week, so they're going to come through and do a lot of deadheading. Um, but you can see all those seeds for the lupin. So again, I'm probably going to have them leave a little bit of it up, but this is kind of a lot and needs to get trimmed back so we can enjoy some of the other varieties that are in this, this garden space. Blue light delphinium, we obviously got some wind because they are flopped over. We'll just leave them flopped for now because they're blue and they're still pretty. 
but yeah by by them being flopped over it's taken about 18 inches off the height of the plant this one is in a tomato cage i used kind of a yellow tomato cage so you can kind of see it there so it's fairly camouflaged but definitely the wind got to these guys and, and cracked them but because they're so flowering they do look kind of whimsy kind of like wisteria soda as it just kind of droops over and is kind of just blowing in the breeze it's more cone flowers more milkweed got a beautiful yellow sombrero yellow cone flower here yeah, I'm seeing like so when I was talking about a lot of milkweed do you see all these little seedlings here so we'll pull those up and then I will see if anybody at work wants them for their garden because I don't want to get rid of any milkweed because obviously it's an important plant for the monarchs but I don't need that much in my garden so we'll pull them and then share them with with those that are at work this here is a firelight hydrangea you can see the flowers are starting they're not opening yet but you can see there's just a ton of buds there this is another plant that got trimmed back to three foot last year and look at it's come back marvelous now in one of the earlier garden tours i had noticed that there was kind of a bare spot on the back side of the the plant but look at there it's all filled in so didn't need to worry about it nature would definitely do its thing and fill the plant in beautifully I'm going to zoom in because this red lark delphinium from this angle is gorgeous. Look at that plant. That's a sturdy stalk. Tons of flowers. And then there's a ton more that will be opening too. That's such a beautiful corally pink color. Really stunning in the garden. All right. I think as we make our way around, let's see if anything else is blooming. Oh, yep. Glamour Girl Phlox. This is a reblooming phlox. It just started blooming. So you can see all the buds. This is going to flower. And then it will go ahead and rebloom once these are all done. Really pretty. All right, let's head out back to the Hosta Garden and see what that's looking like. There's a lot of great color and texture and size out in this Hosta Garden. They're starting to bloom a little bit. We're seeing a few flowers here and there. But man, if you are not somebody that loves Hosta, I would encourage you to buy, let's say five varieties, start with five, find a space and plant them. Make sure you're looking for different colors, different textures, different sizes, because when you do so, you're gonna have just a patchwork of colors, textures, and just beauty. I never really loved hostas myself until Rod planted this area several years ago. And by what he did, just planting one sometimes two of a hosta it is really filled out nice and has a lot of beautiful color and texture we do break it up a little bit we plant some coleus in there just to kind of add some different colorations that's the dark that you're seeing that's some torch like coleus we also have aurelia sun king which is this beautiful chartreuse colored plant again just to add a little bit of different color and texture into this space um, obviously the hostas do break the color up because they're all uniquely different, but just adding a few different plants in isn't a bad idea either. Making our way, we're kind of getting transitioned into a little bit more sunny area. So you'll notice that we start switching over from hostas into some other perennials. We're starting to go a little bit heavier on the astilbe at this point. Also some ferns. Um, here's the new astilbe. This is the dark side of the moon with a beautiful dark black foliage with a nice purple flowers. So that black foliage really helps break up some of the green as well. There's some pulmonaria in there, which is nice for that early season color. In the back there, we've got another hydrangea blooming. In this area here, there's bleeding heart for spring color along with Bernera. Some going bananas daylilies there. That's a nice repeat blooming daylily. We also have Lenten Rose or Hellebore, which is great for our early season color. Right now that's that dark, dark green that you're seeing. Those are the Hellebore. There's a beautiful Bernera. I believe that one is the Jack of Diamonds. And then another Alstroemeria behind it, the pretty 
pink flowers. Milk and Honey is still be, has a nice, very pale, pale, pale pink, almost white. Up there back by the bench, that's the Empress Wu Hasta. I'm gonna apologize, I don't know the names of most of these hostas because they were planted so long ago. Um, I do believe though this one next to the Milk and Honey, right there, I believe that one's coast to coast. We've got some Atlas roses planted out here as well, but they're cycling right now. Some heuchera, or heucherella, the hopscotch. Really can't see those now, but in the spring, those were great. So when planting your garden, you know, it's important to think of all the seasons when adding color in, because you don't want it to be a garden that's heavy on the spring color or heavy on the fall color. You want it to have color all season long. Um, there's another bobo hydrangea right here in front of us, just starting to open up some of the flowers. A bunch more astilbe. Another dark side of the moon astilbe. Do you see it? Right there. Some smithsifuga up on the back there, that nice black. We also have anemone planted in this area, which is great for the fall color. Hardy hibiscus. Now this hibiscus is supposed to be a dark leaf, but because it's getting a lot of shade, we're not seeing as much of that dark foliage coming through. So if you do buy a hibiscus that's supposed to have dark foliage and you don't let it have enough sun, you will see some green on it. So don't be concerned, it's, it's fine, but you're just not gonna get that dark coloration if you're not getting it as much sun as it really needs. Another beautiful Monarda. Monarda are a great plant for the pollinators. Right now I'm seeing so many big bumblebees on it. There's uh, three different series of Monarda right now in the Proven Winners lineup. And it's nice because it kind of, they bloom at different times. So you can kind of extend your Monarda or bee balm season. Jolly Good Clematis is blooming right now on the trellis. Again, a smaller flower size, but lots of flowers. Ligularia Bottle Rocket with a beautiful yellow flower spikes. Up in the back there, that is the incredible blush hydrangea. And the odd thing is, is there's three of them back there. And you can notice the one on the far left is much larger than the ones that get closer to the trees. And the reason is, is because being closer to the trees, they're just not getting as much nutrients or water because the tree is kind of hogging a lot of that. Our daylily patch is starting to bloom. just starting. So that's the thing that's interesting is for some of you who maybe are more in the south, your daylilies have been gone and done their thing probably a month or so ago. Um, for us, they're just starting to open. I do like to plant the rebloomers like the going bananas because like I said, they bloom throughout the summer where a lot of daylilies are kind of a one and done, which is okay because a lot of plants are like that. Um, but I do think it's fun to add the rebloomers in. That way it just lasts a little bit longer. Nephophia, those are such a fun, funky plant. And they also pair well with the daylilies because they kind of have similar-ish foliage feel to them. Here we did some of the Sun Patient Purple along the pond. These here look like they got a little bit dry, so we'll have to get out and get the sprinklers cranked up a little bit more in this area. All right, what do we got back here? Here we have a summerific hibiscus, beautiful dark foliage one. Looks like the Japanese beetles are here because this is what happens to hibiscus when the Japanese beetles arrive. So sometimes we will spray certain plants to protect them from the beetles. We don't, we don't spray the whole garden, obviously, but there are certain plants we will spray, hibiscus being one of them, just so that they look good all summer long. Here's a beautiful daylily. Not sure which it is. It looks like it could be born to run. The incredible hydrangea with just huge, huge flowers. Invincible spirit. Looking so nice. Allium millennium, not open yet, but you can see a ton of buds on there. It's just waiting to go. More Minarda kind of tucked in there next to the Clematis. A 
Baptisia done blooming. But Baptisia is kind of a cool plant because even when it's done flowering, it looks like a shrub. So that a giant shrub, but that's what that is. Ruby spider daylilies. Oh my goodness, look at the size of those blooms. They are just extra, extra large blooms. Gorgeous plant. Here is my proud berry plant, although it's not doing much yet. It'll be doing it um, later on the season, but you can see the pollinators, there's bees all over. So the little nubs that you're seeing there, we'll see if it'll focus. Those are going to be pink berries later on in the season. So there's little kind of whitish pink flowers, but all those little clusters, those are all going to be beautiful pink berries later on this fall and winter. This is a really cool plant, um, under, underutilized, I think. So go to our website, Proudberry, type it in, and you'll be able to pull it up and just see how beautiful that is when it's in its prime. Speaking of prime, how about Primal Scream Daylily? Another really big flower, beautiful orange. Got a summerific hibiscus behind it with a nice dark foliage. Here's an atlas that's blooming. So let's take a look here at the atlas rose flowers. So unfortunately, roses also are a plant that the Japanese beetles tend to find wonderful. So sometimes too, the roses may need to be treated so that they don't get the beetles uh, enjoying them. Here we have the persimmon supertunias, beautiful new variety for 2023. Just really a unique coloration. My clematis wall is still doing fabulous with color. We've got the Raguchi clematis. This is our actually our most popular selling clematis and it really doesn't even look like a clematis. Uh, we've got the Jolly Good. We have Princess Diana. Montana, Montana Maylene. The white is Candida. So these are all kind of your non-typical clematis with them being more the smaller flower form and or the bell-shaped flower form. The alstroemeria I planted last year, which were not hardy in Michigan, these are zoned seven or eight, have come back fabulous. Now I'm not gonna tell you this is gonna be your scenario, but I am gonna tell you a lot of the girls at the garden center that planted this, theirs too has come back in their zone five and six gardens. They're a little bit shorter than that Inca ice I showed you earlier. These are only about 10 to 12 inches tall, which is okay. Look at the flowers. So too, these are a nice cut flower, although the stems won't be quite as large. There's another great kind of golden color one. I mean, look at all that foliage and a lot of beautiful flowers as well. Veronica Ever After, a nice, beautiful periwinkle. Here we have the crema rose. And I don't know. At first I thought crema was pretty cool, but this is what I've been seeing is a lot of this brown going on. So I'm not gonna sing its praises quite as much as I did last year when it was really clean and yellow looking. I mean, the flowers are nice size. They smell nice, but I don't like brown roses in my garden. Here's some more cone flowers, some of the doubles from Proven Winners, really pretty. Some sedum. More sedum. This is the Wine and Roses Wajila. This bloomed gorgeous this spring with beautiful tubular pink flowers. So stunning. Backlight Phlox, some more cone flower, more of the Ever After, Magic Show Ever After Veronica. It really is a very pretty clean plant. The Bright Idea Sedum, which we just saw, but Bright Ideas is the name of it. Limelight Hydrangea. This one here, I can show you some of the sticks that are left. We trimmed it down to about three foot last year. So everything you're seeing over three foot or three feet, somebody's gonna correct me here. This is over probably seven foot tall right now. That's all new growth. So 
So we did a major, major trimming. And just look at how this baby came back. And it came back beautifully. So we'll see once it flowers, but I'm anticipating the flowers are gonna be huge as well. Uh, let's see, this little space got a lot of spent blooms, but we are definitely seeing some phlox starting to bloom. Salsa red, cone flowers, golden feathers, Jacob's ladder. These are beautiful when they're blooming the spring. They had nice purple flowers, but look at that great foliage, great foliage for even when the flowers are done. Another incredible hydrangea, really large flowers, nice sturdy plant. And then over here is kind of a repeat of the other side of the garden. So let's go ahead and head to the front and see what we've got blooming up there. It's that time of year that there's just so much to show you. So for those of you who have held on and have watched this far, thank you. Actually, I'd love to know where are you watching from? Um, what state or even country are you from? Because I think it's always fascinating to see uh, just where people are located. And if you're new to our station, be sure to subscribe. That way you'll get notified of any new videos we put on. So let's head up front and see more of the beautiful annuals that we've planted into the ground and into our containers. The aquapots are doing fabulous. We actually were on vacation for a week and Rod came home midweek to just make sure everything was watered and stuff. And he said when we came back yesterday that these aquapots just exploded in four days time. He said the new coleus this is part of the drop series, it's watermelon drop. He said it was not near this big just four days ago, and now it's virtually taken over the whole back side of the pot. In the front, the sweet potato vine, it's doing the same thing. So much foliage. Foliage color is great though. Like I feel like when you plant your containers that they look different at different times. So when you first plant them, they're probably the most colorful because you're seeing all of the plants that you have put into them. But as the summer goes along, obviously the things that are the most prolific, they're going to be the things that are going to really put on the biggest show. So what are some of the things that are tucked in? Here we have the new Mini Vista Ultramarine, which is very similar, I would say, to the Royal Velvet Supertunia. Also, there's Bermuda Beach trying to poke its way through. Bermuda Beach had an improved color. This is an improved color of Bermuda Beach. And I am loving this color. I feel like the old Bermuda Beach was really hard. Like you didn't know what to match with it. It was just kind of an odd color. But this new color I think is a lot more usable in several different combinations with several other plants. There's a new Super Bells Double White, which is nice. So there's been a lot of new additions to the Double Super Bell family for 2024. A lot of new colors, a lot of bi-colors. So that'll be exciting to see those. And then yeah, on this side here we've got the new Super Tunia Yellow, which I think is so pretty. It goes with so many things. Such a crisp, clean color. And there again, you can see the Ultramarine with a cherry drop, along with the Super Tunia Bermuda Beach. Actually, that ain't a bad combination right there. That looks really nice. The aqua pot you're seeing in the back there, that is the one that we planted. It's got the hoopla super tunia, which is a beautiful bicolor. Just so crisp clean, like that white edge is so perfect. And the pink cashmere, super bina. Both of these are fairly aggressive plants, but that super bina is really aggressive. They're all holding their own, playing well together. Um, the only thing I'm a little disappointed in though is the lack of flowers. And I don't know if it's the Superbina that's just maybe a little bit overly aggressive, not giving us as, as much flowers as it is foliage. I'm not sure. Or is it the Hoopla that maybe isn't vigorous enough to hang, hang out with this Superbina? I don't know. Up until probably a couple weeks ago, they were very even and had a lot of color. So it could be too that maybe we just need to fertilize it more. Give them some more fertilizer and maybe get some more flowers as the reward. So with annuals, you should feed them every week. 
So the, the word is feed them and they'll be fabulous, which is true. So here's a great example. Here we have the Supertunia vista jazzberry. There are five plants planted here, only five. Each of these started off as a four and a half inch container that we planted into a 10 inch pot that we then dropped into the ground. You can see the separation from the one to the next. These are three foot wide and they're about 18 inches tall. So one plant will give you three foot of flower coverage. If that isn't amazing, what is? That's true of all of the Supertunia Vista series of petunias. They're just great, great landscape plants. Here in our hanging basket, we have again the Supertunia Vista Jazzberry, planted with the Mini Vista White and the Mini Vista Midnight. And these look great. And the reason why is because they're getting fed every single week with a water-soluble fertilizer. They're west-facing, so they're getting really the hot sun, sun, and they're looking fabulous. The containers that are on either side of our porch, again, these are aqua pots, so these are all self-watering containers. We fill them about one to two times a week, especially this time of year when it's hot and the plants are more mature. They do need to be filled more often. And of course, we use the cypress grass, which is super thirsty. It's a water plant, so they really thrive in this container. This is the queen tut, and you can just see how it is sprawling out in that container. It's almost a little much, but it's doing what it's supposed to do. It looks great. Then again, with that new supertunia, the yellow new supertunia, it's looking fabulous. We also planted in here the improved superbells pink which is really a very stunning, it almost seems metallic, the color, the shimmer on it. And then we have got Super Bell's Blue Improved. You can see that kind of poking through. Nice big flowers, nice habit. Nemesia Coconut, just kind of here and there sprinkled throughout. And then we also did put the new James Britannia in. This is James Britannia Dusk, beautiful color but an aquapot is not the right place for that plant. It's more of a drought tolerant, loves the hot, the warm. So being in this moist aquapot really wasn't the good or the best placement for that plant. We're gonna actually end today's video with this container, which I simply love. I always try to use something different and unique. I mean, now that I say that, I've <laughs> used some of these plants for several years in a row but they are different and unique than what we normally use. We use a lot of flower color. And in this pot, I've used a lot of foliage color. So what do we have? We have the Begonia Pegasus, which is my thriller. And it's just basically growing for its foliage. It does get some insignificant white flowers, but nothing that we're really gonna talk about because we're not seeing any flowers. There is some of the fireworks fuchsia and I just love how those dangle in the breeze. Great plant for the hummingbird and it's just it's just a fun kind of different looking flower. Also we use the fuchsia autumn now. Look at that great color. Is that not gorgeous? And they do get some flowers on them. Here's one. It's not super significant at least not here in this planting. It's the foliage. I'm all about the foliage in this plant. And then we use some of the big leaf vine which is just kind of my spiller over, kind of a filler spiller. I just love the looks of that plant. We added in a little bit of the Diamond Mountain Euphorbia, just to add a little sprinkle of white. And then we also have some of the beautiful blush begonias that just kind of pair nicely with that beautiful fuchsia in this container. So it's always fun to kind of do something that's outside the norm, something you may not normally do. So I encourage you to be creative, think outside the box, and come up with something different that maybe you wouldn't normally do in your containers. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. I always love to hear the questions that you may have when we do these garden tours. If you're new to our station, be sure to subscribe on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you found something in this tour that was inspirational to you and maybe something you want to jot down to try for your garden for next year. You can head on over to our website at gardencrossings.com if you're looking for more information on any of the plants that we talked about today. Thanks for watching. I'm Heidi from Garden Crossings.